Hi, this is Gary Stocker. This is the first in a series of videos that will simulate what actually goes on in a modern medical laboratory. If you have interest in a career as a medical laboratory scientist, this is the kind of video that will help you make the decision whether this is the best career for you or not. The medical laboratory science career is indeed a hidden career. Even despite the fact that some 70% of all diagnoses and treatments are based on laboratory results, very, very few people outside of the modern medical laboratory know what goes on. I'll try and show you indeed what happens in those laboratories. Before we get to those careers, just a couple of ways that you can move forward if you choose a medical laboratory science career. You can look at what's called the traditional route. It's called three plus one, where you earn approximately 90 college credits at a college mostly of your choice and spend a six to 12 month internship learning the particular skills, some of which I'll show you today. In addition, for those more eager to start the career sooner, you can get an associate's degree in medical laboratory technology. Very similar work, the compensation's different. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. Before we actually see what goes on in a modern medical laboratory, these are a couple of images that I wanna talk about to set up the simulations that we'll talk about here in a few minutes. You can see in the upper left-hand portion, the image highlights the robotics and automated analyzers commonly seen in modern medical laboratories. You'll look at the way those analyzers are run and used in the next few minutes. In the bottom left is the composition of blood. And the three basic components are the plasma, and you can see that circled here. You can see that the next part is a combination of white blood cells and platelets. It's about 4% of the typical volume in a test tube of yours and my blood. And at the bottom is red blood cells. And of course, red blood cells contain hemoglobin, which are used to carry oxygen to the cells. And then on the right-hand side are some of the common chemistry analytes, chemistry tests that can be done in a modern medical laboratory. Envision in working in an environment like this, where you spend a large percentage of your work time monitoring the performance of analyzers, quality control, patient results, and things like that. This is a little bit darker image than you would normally see in a medical laboratory, but the concept holds. Much of the work in modern medical laboratories is done monitoring instruments and reagents and patient results. Here is how the simulation training, the simulation examples will work. Envision that computer monitoring scenario I've showed in the slide before. And I've recreated what is essentially the equivalent of four computer screens to show the kind of work you would do in a modern medical laboratory. I'm going to teach one, and the next slide will actually test. It will give you a chance to see if you can apply and understand some of the things we talk about. Let's look at first at the test we're looking at, troponin. Troponin is one of the more common indicators for a heart attack, for a cardiac event. And we have on the top left, kind of the biggest screen of all, because it arguably is the most important. And we have a patient, and these are all fictional results and fictional patients, and some analytes or tests being run on this patient. You can see the sodium result is not yet released. The glucose result is 452, which is really high at a critical value. There's the normal range for a glucose. You can see 452 is well above the normal range. Troponin at 0 0.18 is within normal limits. And potassium at 5.9 is a little high, but there's a note there. And one of the things you're trained to do as a medical laboratory scientist is be able to look at specimens to know, hey, is this result accurate or might it be impacted by some things going on inside the tube? There's a difference between in vitro in a test tube and in vivo inside the body. So these are the results on John Allen. And we can see we also wanna make sure that we get Mr. Allen's results out quickly. His results have been in the laboratory for not quite five minutes. We can see another patient whose results have been in, whose specimen has been in a little bit longer. And then we also need to be able to monitor the instruments. So this, so this top right monitor is an instrument monitor. And we can see everything looks good. The fluidics are fine across the board for troponin and sodium and glucose and cholesterol, not posted yet. The electronics look good and the reagents. Of course, all chemistry tests require reagents and the analyzers monitor those reagents for you. And then maybe even as important as the patient results is the quality control monitor. And the way this works, is 
laboratories regularly run specimens with a known quantity of a substance. Analyte is sometimes the word used. And so we can see that the low sodium, the quality control result is 96, and the acceptable range is between 90 and 110. 96 is between 90 and 110, so you know the sodium result is good. The glucose, the quality control result is 52, which is a little bit below the range of 55 to 70, so this analyte cannot be released on patient results yet until the reason for that low glucose result is determined and rerunning the quality control specimen gets a result between 55 and 70. And then troponin, the QC result is 2.6. The range, the acceptable range is 2.1 to 3.1, that's a go. So we could release the troponin, we could not release the glucose. So that's a quick overview of how these simulations work in a medical laboratory. So this is the second and final screen in this simulation. And you can see the four monitors that we talked about previously are present. It's a different patient, some different analytes, different chemistries being tested. The results are different. You can see the normal ranges listed in the third and the fourth column over. You can see the elapsed timed results. You can take a look at the instrument monitor. And you can look at the quality control results. So pause the video, look through the four screens, and then make a note of some things you've observed as part of this four screen monitor. And then when you're ready, click, click play or resume again. And I'll quickly go over what you should be looking for to simulate what goes on in a modern medical laboratory. Let's look at each of the four monitoring screens. And we can see that Ms. Washington has some normal results. She also has a troponin whose results are used to monitor heart attack events. That's a little bit high. And you can see there's a comment posted, call the results to the physician, to the nurse, because this is a high result. The patient may be having a cardiac event that the doctor needs to know about. Let's look at the elapsed timed results. And we can see it's been about 30 minutes. It's got a yellow background. So, you know, whatever the laboratory de determines, the results for Ms. Washington really probably need to be released in the next minute and 15 seconds. And again, you can see another patient whose results are not on this screen. When we look at the fluidics, we can see there's some issues with the sodium fluidics. We can see there's some issues with the glucose fluidics. The electronics look fine across the board, and the reagents look good across the board, except for, for cholesterol, and that's not really part of this patient's test results, so it doesn't really matter for this case. And then finally, we look at the quality control results to make sure the results the laboratory is sending out fall within the guidelines of known values and we can see in each of the three cases for sodium and glucose and troponin, the quality control results fall within the acceptable range. 84 is between 70 and 110. 0.025 is between 0.1 and 0.6. So the status is go for all these results. So all of these results can be released and the troponin result will be called on the phone or other mechanism to the physician or nurse for patient Jane Washington. There is both an acute and a chronic demand for this kind of medical laboratory science talent. These videos are created to help give those who might have an interest in that career more of a realistic feel for what the career work would be like. If you have interest in medical laboratory science as a career, we have a link down below that will provide you some continuing guidance on how to learn more about the career, how to look at colleges for the career, and actually which colleges you can choose to pursue a medical laboratory science career. In future videos, I'll talk about the compensation for medical laboratory scientists, career opportunities, the education required, and the training required to fulfill this fascinating career. My name is Gary Stocker. I am with Medical Laboratory Science 2030. Our website is mls2030.com, and you can look for that same MLS 2030 at YouTube for videos on how to become a medical laboratory scientist, some interviews with current medical laboratory scientists, and much more.